Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, October the 14th, 2013, and here are our top stories. Tonight, domestic opposition continues to gate veteran memorials. Then, Michael Savage joins the hunt for missing nukes. And food stamp recipients ransack a Walmart. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Because let me tell you something, when these things implode like this, it'll implode so bad that the globalists won't even be able to ship in food and stuff for themselves. Well, it was just five weeks ago that InfoWars broke the story of nukes being moved secretly at Dias Air Force Base. Now, these were nukes that were not supposed to be there, and we were told that they were going to South Carolina. Later, we found out that Lindsey Graham was fear-mongering about terrorist attacks, nuclear terrorist attacks in Charleston, South Carolina. And we learned that the number two missile commander was dismissed on that same day. Now, when that happened, a retired Air Force General, Eugene Habinger, said, I know of no other case ever of a deputy commander who was relieved for cause. Now, he was the commander from 1996 to 1998, and it was a nonsense charge. He's not been charged by local authorities. But then it got much stranger on Friday. The number one commander of missile commands, nuclear missiles, was dismissed. And no one else other than InfoWars and Michael Savage are interested in reporting this story. The crony media isn't interested in investigating anything about nukes being moved or even what appears to be an unprecedented purge of top-level nuclear commanders. And the fact that these firings were leaked in an email, and the email said that it was due to a lack of trust over a temporary assignment. This is a general who's in charge of all the nuclear commands. I wonder what kind of a temporary assignment he might have been on. Now, of course, it also is interesting to note that the general who relieved him of command had previously been in charge of space and cyberspace. Now, that would have obvious connections to the surveillance state. So the crony media is not interested in covering this, and I guess that is the real story. Now, also breaking on this weekend, if you remember, Obama is shutting down everything, right? He shut down all the memorials in Washington. These are memorials that are out in the open where there's no entrance, no entrance fees. He even tried to shut down the Grand Canyon and thousands of miles of the Atlantic Ocean. But when he tried to keep World War II vets away from their memorial, that was a bit much for most people. And this weekend, they took him on. They took down the barricades and they defiantly but peacefully took them to the White House and stacked them in front of it now, today, they put them right back because Obama just doesn't realize what a PR disaster his behavior is. He's acting like a petulant, spoiled brat. And look at this video footage of this guy just spoiling for a fight with the veterans, egging them on. Isn't that disgusting? I mean, Obama is saying to the World War II vets, you didn't build this. And for once, he's right. They fought for something very different than the kind of government that we're getting from Barack Obama. Now, there was another confrontation at the White House this weekend, and this was from a Nobel Peace Prize nominee who lost to Obama for the Nobel Peace Prize. Mala, Malala is from Pakistan, and she confronted him about drone strikes, and she pointed out, she expressed her concerns that drone attacks are fueling terrorism. Innocent victims are killed in these acts, and they lead to resentment among the Pakistani people. That's right. They actually create more terrorists than they kill. Now, we're being warned all the time by the mainstream media that irreversible damage is going to be done to the economy if we don't take care of this next crisis coming up on Thursday, the debt ceiling. This is what they're typically saying. The deadline for Congress to raise the government's limit is three days away. Treasury Department officials are warning that if lawmakers do not reach an agreement by Thursday, the government will default on its debt for what is the first time ever with an asterisk. And I say with an asterisk because after the War of 1812, it happened for a brief time. And then back in 1979, because of a sort of technical glitch, it happened again very briefly because... Congress delayed raising the debt ceiling. Anyway, this would potentially cause irreversible damage to our economy. An InfoWars article points out it's a much bigger asterisk than Shepard Smith said. The U.S. has repeatedly defaulted on debts. It's not just at the War of 1812. It was a Revolutionary War. It was also around the Civil War on greenbacks, liberty bonds in 1934. And China is alleging that the U.S. has already defaulted by weakening the dollar. When they print massive amounts of money, if you've got a debt with someone and you decide you're going to pay them back with monopoly money that you've just printed with a fiat currency, that's a way of defaulting. 
Are we going to allow the government to grow the debt by another 5 or 6%? That's what they're looking for with the ceiling. They're going to use that ceiling. They wouldn't call for it and demand it if they didn't need it. We've got to stop the spending. And the irreversible damage that's being done to this country is not by refusing to go into greater debt. It's by shipping our jobs overseas, taking away labor, taking away our income producing ability. And now we're going to be transferring away small businesses, local businesses, as well as our wealth with things like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. On Friday, Mike Adams was on the Alex Jones radio show, and he was talking about the unfinished and unusable Obamacare website. And he pointed out that there would be major catastrophic issues if the EBT site were to go down. And the very next day, that's exactly what happened. So what does it tell us about society when we see this happening? How did people react? So the EBT card food stamp recipients ransacked Walmart stores. Walmart tried to work with them and tried to give them some leniency to let them purchase things, even though they couldn't verify if they had any money on their EBT account. And the story goes on to report that one woman who racked up $700 worth of groceries had only 49 cents on her card. And when the database came back online and card purchase limits were suddenly restored, the cardholders abandoned their full carts and just walked away. That's why you should be concerned about the kind of fragile infrastructure we have and the kind of moral conditions that we have here in America. And you should also be concerned about another infrastructure, not one that's falling apart, but one that's being built, an infrastructure of tyranny with the TSA and with secretive courts. We learned today that the NSA gets a green light from a secret court. This is their own court. DNI Clapper has decided to declassify, declassify a court decision and disclose publicly that the government filed an application with the FISA court seeking renewal of the authority to collect telephony metadata in bulk and that the court renewed that authority. Well, isn't that nice? We've had the pretense that courts can change the Constitution. Now we have the pretense that secret courts can change the Constitution without any argument, without any debate, without the public even knowing what is in these court decisions. Take a look at this decision here. It shows, first of all, notice that we've got about 15 lines blacked out describing who and where they're going to be getting tangible things from. And then look at the top and bottom of every page. It says top secret. There is no reason for any court in America to have a top secret decision. The U.S. needs to know about that. They pretend that they're changing the Constitution. They aren't. The emperor has no, no clothes. And yet what we hear today is in direct contradiction to that, we see that Sensenbrenner, who was one of the ones who put together the Patriot Act under George Bush, is now saying that he's going to put the NSA bulk collection of data out of business. He says it's time to put their metadata program out of business. Well, since he wrote the Patriot Act and since he hasn't really been involved in civil liberties for the last 12 years, is this anything more than a head fake? Is he really kind of concerned that this Frankenstein monster that he's created, he needs to distance himself from it now that he sees the peasants picking up pitchforks and torches? I think that's all there really is to it. If he's really serious, we'll see them shut down the FISA court and we'll see him put in jail the judge that issued this decision as well as the FBI people and the NSA people who are using that decision. Well, it's not just the feds who are getting into the tyranny act. It's also at local state government. And we got a special report right after the break with Alex Jones showing you what happened in Austin this weekend. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. 
That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women. Fibrocystic breast disease, because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine, atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals, it's vegan friendly, it's gluten free, it's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price. InfoWarsLife.com, Survival Shield, the atomic nascent iodine available right now. Welcome back. There are people at all levels of government that are just itching for a crisis, real or imagined, to show that they have power. This is what Alex Jones encountered today. They call it security, but really, the nanny state is mastering the people, totally enslaving them into a prison, the so-called security state. It's all by design. Talk about how ridiculous the city of Austin is. It's a couple days after major rains, and they will shut sometimes for weeks all the Greenbelt Trail entrances because of the nanny state saying it's too dangerous for people to even get near rapids. That's like saying shut all the roads down because some pedestrian might walk out and get hit by a car. And of course, that is thousands of times more dangerous. And it's just like they've uh, banned dodgeball and now playing any ball games at most public schools. This is the nanny state. They want you trained to be an absolute, total prisoner. While the government trains specialized paramilitary forces with armored vehicles and tanks to kill you at the instant you don't follow orders. And the TSA says we will arrest you if you make jokes about us. You are also reminded that any inappropriate remarks or jokes concerning security may result in your arrest. We appreciate your cooperation while these measures are in effect. The idea that this has to be shut down, they say, because people might walk a half mile down here to Barton Creek, just shows the prison that they built in the name of safety. That was actually done with the Chinese emperors by the bureaucratic class. They turned them into prisoners in the name of safety and security. That's what's happening to everybody right now. Honeybees kill 200 plus people a year. That's more than terrorists. We need TSA down here to protect us from honeybees. I mean, we've got to be protected. Of course, I shouldn't joke around. They're making people wear helmets in England and now in places like New Jersey to play soccer. I shouldn't give them any ideas. 14 out of 20 Austinites in the questionnaire we did on the street. We have video of it. Should make everybody wear helmets to walk down the street. Can I get you to sign my petition to uh, compel people to wear helmets while they're walking? Sure. Awesome. Can we? Can I get you to sign up to make everyone well, wear one? Though, it's like... To just go. Would that be a mandatory law or something? You're saying that? I mean, I hope so. We can get it passed. Well, I think. UT, we're super trendy, so we can get it. What starts here changes the world. I'm, I'm down for it. We can't be trusted, and that's why if we can just make this a, a law, a rule that we can enforce. Yeah, no, of course, tickets for anyone without helmets. Godspeed. You can do it. And of course, when I started walking up here, a woman said, hey, you can't go down that path. It's closed. I was getting out of my car. She was getting in hers. I walked past her. She went, came about 100 yards out of her way to follow me up to the entrance of the path to say, hey, it's closed. You can't go in there. And she said it with authority and pleasure. I said, you know what? I don't pay attention to bureaucratic baloney. I'll go down here on my own risk. Oh, I'm so daring to walk down in America, down a forest path, 
I guarantee you, when we put this on the nightly news and then it goes on YouTube later, there'll be people that agree with the system. Guaranteed. And that's just the example of what I'm talking about. That, that poor woman wouldn't go out of her way to defend liberty, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. She wouldn't dare go to the NSA and tell them stop spying on her illegally. She would just come up aggressively and with pleasure because she believes she's enforcing for the state and tell me, hey, you don't go down there. Oh, look right here. Looks like folks are already awake in this area. <laughs> How crazy is it to walk up and see that? Okay, bro, you're a jogger I see down here sometime. Yeah. You just came running from another angle, right. and you told me you've seen them writing tickets? Yeah, sure. They write tickets for lots of stuff out here. Uh, park closed. We, we should get uh, away from the street. Back. Really? Yeah. Really? Yep. Amazing, bro. Thank you. They'll write you a ticket. I'll see you on the... All right, thanks. Well, there you go, folks. Total prison. Alex Jones signing off for now for Infowars.com. Follow us on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. Well, a power grab that we should all be concerned about is the much larger power grab of Agenda 21. And if you want to learn about that, you can get Behind the Green Mask by Rosa Corey at the InfoWarsStore.com. Find out how they're going to use local tyranny to take over not just green spaces for a weekend. And if you're watching on YouTube, please consider getting a subscription to PrisonPlanet.tv. You can watch that along with 10 other friends simultaneously, and it helps to support our operation here. Now, speaking of YouTube, one of the larger YouTube channels hosting InfoWars content is Change Da Channel. That's Ken Webb, and he's got Obama Deception has about 13 million views on that channel. Jakari Jackson is going to be interviewing him after the break, and he's going to be talking to him about a new narrative, dramatic narrative series that he's putting on his YouTube channel. Stay tuned. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember... The revolution against tyranny is growing. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Ken Webb. He is a political commentator and satirist. You can find him on YouTube as Change the Channel, as DA Channel, and also on Truth Frequency Radio. He joins us now to talk about his most recent endeavors. All right, thanks for joining us, Kenneth. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, Ken, you know, I'm familiar with your work and uh, the things you do, but for the people who don't know, tell us about Change the Channel and also Truth Frequency Radio. Um, Truth Frequency Radio is a, a, a bunch of activists who 
turned radio talk show host, and um, a bunch of us uh, were at a, a, another uh, radio network, and we just all that, that you know that just kind of folded. So we all went over the true frequency. It's really awesome. A lot of uh, different uh, people, different styles, and everything. Um, we also on Saturdays we have a roundtable discussion where a bunch of us to get together on Saturday nights from 10 to 12 and talk about things that are going on. Um, my show is from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, and um, I, I take a lot of things from YouTube that I do over on YouTube, and I will put into radio. Also, you know, like I'll do a, a weekly the list. Uh, I'll dig from the hat sometimes, pick out topics to talk about. I'll do rants, uh, breakdowns, uh, little mini documentaries in there. So I try to take everything from the visual to the audio out there. Um, over on Change the Channel, uh, I do, I've been doing that for about eight years now and uh, trying to do different styles of videos to present the information. And you know, tell us, uh, Ken, because I noticed uh, you have some new additions uh, where you constantly change your, your flow and your style. But tell us about some of the more uh, recent additions you've added to your repertoire. Um, the newest one is Monologue with the Revolutionary. It's a fictional, fictional uh, monologue set in the future about the revolution to come as told by a revolutionary living in a new world order. Um, and it, it goes on. I did two episodes of that. It's really good because it's, it's fictional and I like uh, changing it up and presenting the information in this format also because it's, you know, a lot of the fiction is based on reality. Um, in, in the story, it, you know, uh, it, we'll learn about the future. Um, you know, it, as the story continues, you'll learn more and more about it because they've just got two episodes up now and they're about uh, two minutes each. And about what led up to all of this. So you learn as it goes along what led up to the point that the character's at. Um, what happened during the armed revolt of 2020, uh, which was uh, it was talked about in the second episode, mm -hmm. uh, which we pretty much know that that was all squashed. And uh, what happened to his family and his home, all the while showing what's happening at the present, you know, with the struggle, uh, what things are like, how people live, under what conditions how the revolt is rebuilding basically from scratch after the, the 2020 revolt. Uh, tactics and technologies, <clears throat> excuse me, being used, which I really like as, you know, being the writer of something like this, is thinking about what tactics that would be employed after an armed revolt had been squashed. You know, information would be golden, mm -hmm. um, how they would organize in such conditions, what the next move would be, um, because it's, you know, what we do now, basically, in the information war, so it's it's a good comparison from the future in fiction to what we're doing now. I mean, we don't have an armed revolt, but the information information war is, is where it is now. But they're kind and, of forced into no other options at this time. So I'm using a lot of reality in the work of fiction. That's exactly what it is, because we see uh, every day the parallels between fiction and the real world get less and less. We think about 1984, we think about Brave New World and all these other things going on. So let's talk about some real world issues right now with this current uh, government shutdown. What are your views on that? I'm wondering, I'm really wondering if this is, is, is this, when they're going to make their move, I mean, because I think about it futuristically as uh, the, what will affect if they, you know, we default on the 17th. Mm -hmm. you know, what would happen if they allowed that to happen? Because uh, the powers that be, you know, the puppet masters out there, they they could use any of these situations to go take it to the next level. If they if we default and let's say people start not receiving their social security mm -hmm. or uh, veterans benefits or you know anything like that people can't go to the grocery store i mean i told my mom i was like i, I hope you got some money set back just in case i'm not saying anything's going to happen they'll probably come through with a quick fix mm -hmm. and with this thing will drag on and on but there's the other option that they want to they want to do that because what would happen people start rioting raids on the stores at some point and then they would be able to crack down a right. lot more martial law right so that's it's a possibility i don't know i kind of go back and forth i'm not good at predictions really but i think that this could be an opportunity for them to do a lot of things if they wanted to or 
allow through, you know, like the, the furloughed workers, something to happen like uh, uh, some kind of false flag attack of some sorts. And we definitely don't want to see that. But something that's not a prediction, we see all these veterans not being allowed to go to their own memorials, things that they built with their own blood, sweat and tears. And it's just very sickening, in my opinion. You know, these guys go to their own memorial. And you can't even get in. They got it taped off or roped off. And your thoughts on that? Hey, that's horrible. Then that it's just a yeah, it's just a telltale sign that they don't care. They do not care about us. They don't care about veterans. And you know how they always, every time they're talking about it, the brave men and women and all this stuff, and they'll drape themselves with soldiers behind they'll them. They'll bring them to the football they, games and yeah. you know how they have the kids run out on the field and hug them and all that. Mm -hmm. And they, they set all of that up, uh, and then what do they do to them? I mean, look how many homeless veterans that there are out there, the percentage of homeless people that are actually veterans, and that's been a, uh, for decades and decades, that's been the case. They don't take care of them. They just use the same thing as us. It's, you know, it's, it's sad. I, I was glad the first day when it, when they just, you know, busted through the barriers and went on, but now the reports are they're just like, they're spending more money on the police there police presence and all of that and, and protecting in that manner than they needed when they just left it open. I mean, it's, That's it's exactly, insane. Exactly right. Now, Ken, our time is short. So tell us about, uh, just give us an encouraging word for any activists out there, any commentators out there who may want to get started in the line of work that you do. Um, you just got to have an idea, get the information, research it, and spread it around in any way that you can. Just come up with the idea if it's nothing but, I mean, if it's something like making flyers and, and, and posting them around with some information on it and coming up with different ways and different, you know, uh, means to get people to wake up. Because a lot of times people have to learn things for themselves. So uh, a lot of times you could just put up a, a flyer with just a, a email address to some declassified government documents that mm -hmm. are out there that, that if people would actually take the time to read, they would know that this whole thing is just insane. But um, but as long as, and, and a word of encouragement also is, is a lot of people want instant gratification in this war, like the war and the battle that we're in. And I don't think that that's going to happen. I think that we just need to keep on our present course of this information war. And I always know that as long as they are there, we're going to be there. Exactly you right. You could, exactly you could destroy right. their. You can destroy the entire world and say three cats, you know, got in a rocket ship and blasted off. You got three people. One's going to think they the top dog with their mentality. The number two guy's going to sit there and want to be number two. And there's going to be the third person who's going to be the bottom of the of the barrel. He's going to be the slave to them. He's always going to be number three. And in that mindset, the revolution will continue. Because exactly. Now, sorry to cut you off there, Ken, oh, but okay. our time is short. And I definitely appreciate you, Ken Webb. Change the channel. That's DA Channel and also Truth Frequency Radio. Thank you for your time, man. Hey, thanks a lot, man. And one of the great things about Ken is he posts many of our videos on his YouTube page, Change the Channel. Oh, bomb Deception is there as well as many others. But you can also find those on PrisonPlanet.tv where you can get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the Special Reports, the Rants, and of course, the Movies. So be sure to become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you next time. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.